here with more of the cat lady. I have no idea what's going on. Full kitty ramming speed. Meowcor. I hope this goes fast. There we go. Oh, excellent. That worked. Alright, what can I do as a cat? I can walk. Excellent. Can Bleach do that to your face? Also, I'm gonna guess this cat's teacup. Do, 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 do. Going for a stroll. Hey there, gorgeous. Get here. I see my old lady brought the bleach again. What a shame. I really liked your eyes. <laughs> it could have been a start of something. Uh, very exciting for us, if you know what I mean. She does that every single time. What do they call it? Trust issues. <laughs> That's it. Well, never mind. Plenty more fish in the sea. I I'm not too fussy, but even I have some standards. Ain't gonna touch a bird like you, I gotta be honest, girl. You look like shit. Thanks, you look great too. I wouldn't want you to think I'm not a kind man. Uh, uh, plenty of time until dinner, and you're in pain, so... I've brought something to end your suffering. Think of it as an option. I've got this gun here. <laughs> It's one of my favourites. There's just one bullet in the chamber. Large calibre. You'd you be long dead before you'd feel any pain. Sounds good, doesn't it? I mean, it's, ju it's just an idea, you know. No pressure. Ah, of course. You can't see it. That bleach turns your eyes to nothing but jelly. So I'll just leave it for you here. Feel free to use it. That, that bullet's meant for you anyway. I'd better go now. We won't want to get caught red-handed again, would we? You naughty minx. Get out of here. What was that? You can't reach it. Well, what did you expect? Life's a real fucker sometimes. I... I... Back to being a cat, I guess! I... this game is... Stealth Kitty. You go that way? No. C can you... If I walk forward, he's gonna shoot me. There we go. Nope! Oh. Really? Didn't notice that at all. Still gonna wait till he's leaning forward to go. Again. A go. I meant to say though or again, and then I just made up word. Okay. Strolling along, cause I'm a cat and that's what we do. Good what? kitty. 
Who's this? My eyes. I can't... I can't see a thing. That bitch. A key? Who are you? Say something. Anything. Meow. I... I should be able to unlock the handcuffs now. Oh no. The gun. That idiot left his gun. I would like eyes back. No! No, no, no! I dropped it. Where is it? Where the hell is it? I've got it. I don't know where to go! <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, if I shoot myself, I'll come back to life okay, I'm right? Sorry, let's see. I have to break my promise. What? Well, that sounded nice and juicy. Am I not supposed to be dead? I don't stay dead for long. What? Death is nothing at all. You've only slipped away into the next room. Hope you don't mind creepy posters. It's your room. You can do what you like with it. But... I definitely prefer this to fairies, rainbows, and pink unicorns. Did you make these? No. My boyfriend made them. Some of them, anyway. So, Miss Ashworth, I happen to have a bottle of wine in my bag. I was going to leave it to Robert, but I forgot all about it. Robert? The guy with the rats? Oh, yes. Of course. So, shall we have a drink then? We could get to know each other a bit more. I know, I promise I won't get in the way. And, I mean, you don't have to if you don't feel like it. But since we're going to live together for a little while, it won't hurt if we talk to each other, will it? Yeah, that's okay, I guess. Great! I'll bring the wine. Okay, you're the oh, you only slipped away in the next room. I am I, and you are you. To each other, Miss Ashworth. Yes, in I do. The kitchen. I'll go get it, shall I? Yes, please. And while you're there, could you get a couple of glasses too? So here's why I didn't bother with the other question. If you know you're dying. Most of the time, people just don't give a shit about their condition. My mom had brain cancer, and for the years that she was diagnosed, she basically did whatever she wanted. That was the most we got along. Because I always had an issue with her doing stuff for people that, like, people just shat on my mom constantly, even though she was doing stuff for them. You know, and I hated it, so we ended up arguing because I was mad that she didn't stand up for herself. So, when she got cancer, she was like, oh, right, I have cancer. Screw this. I'm going to stand up for myself and do whatever I want. Threw down with people. She and I had a great time. I'm not sure if I can fully trust her, but so far she seems genuine. Maybe I'll give her a chance. Have you found that corkscrew yet? We also need some wine glasses. Oops. I forgot about the wine glass. Do I have wine glasses? Oh, 
Oh, that's the cabinet, aren't they? Take one glasses. One for me, one for Mitzi. I'm glad she said that and that I remembered those existed. There you go. Let's get that bottle open. Yeah. But we'll need glasses too. See if you can find some. I found some wine glasses. I drink wine out of a coffee mug. All right. That's all we if need. I drink wine, I think wine's gross. I really must say this before we start. Yeah? I promise I won't cut your throat when you're asleep. Oh, thank you. Very funny, Mitzi. Oh, no, I mean it. That's fine. But just so you know, I always sleep with my eyes open. That's creepy. Oh. It's not raining anymore. Oh well, I don't mind rain. Sometimes I even like it. I like Mitzi. But according to weather forecast, there's a nasty fog coming. Now that I'm actually scared of. I got lost in a fog once when I was just nine or ten. I remember I sat under a tree crying, thinking some monster would appear right in front of me and drag me away. Yes, yes it will. Now that you're a big girl, you know there are no monsters. Yeah? How do you know? Good question. The only monsters are us. Murderers, rapists, arsonists. There you go. They're the real beasts. So far from humanity, they're no longer capable of feeling compassion or guilt. They're the ones we should really be afraid of. But whether they're lurking in the woods, or fog, or the darkness of our cellars, it's all irrelevant. You can't predict what happens. You can't do anything to stop it. There is only one way. You turn into a beast yourself. And like them, you show no mercy. Whoa! Where did that come from, Miss Ashworth? I just don't like murderers. They're nothing but... Parasites. How are you planning to find this guy? I don't know yet. A bit of detective work, perhaps. It shouldn't be that hard, really. There are only eight apartments here. One is yours. That leaves us with seven. I was hoping that you could give me a hand, actually. You know some of your neighbors, don't you? Not many. <laughs> I never really cared about them. They changed over the years, too. You probably also figured by now that this is not the sort of place where new neighbors are greeted with a freshly baked cake. You see a new face, you give them a blank stare as you pass them in the hall, and you forget about them a minute later. That bad, eh? Well, there's that bull guy who lives above me in flat five. He came here recently to shout in my face. He's a nasty piece of work, but I really don't think he's the person you're looking for. Does he do I wanted him to be, though. I think he's a train driver. I can't imagine somehow that my guy would be a train driver. Okay, that's good. Leaves us with just six. Yay! We narrowed it down. You know, I'd have to think. You know, maybe not tonight. Let's just talk about something else, okay? I no, less options to see. There's no need to rush this. Maybe tomorrow we could sit down together and make a plan. I could draw a simple map of the building, and with your help, mark down who lives where? Sounds good to me, Mitzi. I like how she's suddenly, like, super on board. So, the big C. Want to talk about it? Well, to be honest, I didn't really want to tell you about it like that. I put you in a very difficult position, I know. It's just that I was really desperate to get this room. I hope you can understand. This is the last and most important thing I must do before my time is up. It's fine. You seem all right. It's just... I find it hard to trust people these days. Maybe it's time I opened my eyes to see others have problems too. She's growing as a person. Some, like yourself, even bigger than mine. What kind of cancer is it? Do you mind me asking? 
brain tumor. Her name is glioblastoma. That's uh, exactly what I want. Yep, yeah. they're all girls, the way I imagine it. Just look at their names. Lymphoma, melanoma, myeloma, leukemia, sarcoma. Each of them a fucking goddess of death. Beautiful and ruthless. Hmm, you might just be right about that, Mitzi. I used to be a nurse. I know a few things about cancer. And I know glioblastoma. She's a real bitch. Yeah, and yet she gets to be the prom queen before night ends while I disappear down the back exit. How long? They said I had a year. But that was six months ago, so... Yeah. Not awfully long. Is there anything... They've tried. I'm sorry. Yeah. So am I. Do you want to talk about something else? You mentioned a boyfriend. Tell me something about him. Yeah, okay. Let's talk about him. His name is Jack. He's dead. Aw. Oh. Miss Ashworth, are you sure you want to listen about my miserable life? I don't want to bring you down. These aren't happy stories. And I'm not a happy stories kind of person. I'm sure you've noticed by now. I'm sorry I'm not talking much, by the so. way. Anyway, I suppose I would have had to tell you about Jack sooner or later. After all, he is the main reason I'm here. I just... don't know where to start. Um, part of the reason why I'm not talking is because I don't like talking about stuff involving can it, it was several years ago that we lost my mom, but it's, like, still a thing that really weighs on me. Um, so it's just not a good subject for me. But that's not going to keep me from playing the game, of course. I just, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm going to move on. Tell me how you two met. Oh, we knew each other for like, forever. We grew up on the same street. It's funny how we seem to be made for each other. The perfect match. I always knew he was the guy for me and I'm sure he never doubted that either. Jack was absolutely Aww, crazy OTP. We thought one day we would marry, have children, be happy. I never had many friends because I had Jack. I didn't need anybody else. You know, if there's one thing I'm really grateful for in my life, it's that I got to experience this pure, perfect love. That's Some people beautiful. Some people a lifetime without knowing how it feels. I guess I've been very lucky. But all luck runs out sometimes. No! How did he take the news about your cancer? He thought I was joking at first. He laughed. And he got really angry. I swore to him I was serious, but he still wouldn't believe me. We had a big fight that night. It was our first and only fight. It was awful. Well... He smashed some stuff. His guitar, of all things, was the worst. He loved that guitar. Why did he break it? He was absolutely furious. He walked out on me that night, and when he came back the next day, he was different. He begged me to try surgery and chemotherapy. I didn't really want those things, but I did the chemo for him. It didn't help. It just made me feel sick all the time. I felt trapped in this strange place where nothing that happened around me seemed real. Maybe that's why I didn't see what my cancer was doing to Jack, and it was destroying him as well. changed. He became obsessed with death. It seemed death was all he ever thought about, even though it was me, not him, who was supposed to die. I get it. If somebody has an illness like that, it can really affect your entire family. Like, I know when my mom was diagnosed, it, it changed a lot of things for everyone 
And then my mom's, you know, her side of the family was like really shitty to her over all that. And uh, I'm not going to go too much into it, but uh, yeah, I don't talk to them anymore because they're horrible people and they deserve each other. And I just, no, absolutely not. Um, yeah, finding out somebody has cancer, that that's a roller coaster. Especially when it's things like brain cancer and stuff like that. Um, my mom tried the chemo and stuff like that, but one of her tumors was right where, pretty much where your spine like meets like it was in her brain but it was like right above the spine um so they couldn't do surgery on it so they did it on the two that were on the top of her head but they couldn't mess with that one so it was just chemo and waiting which i think is really the worst part um she did last a long time though you know they gave her a year which is what they gave this girl and mom made it about a year and a half close to two Jack made those pictures on your wall. Moving on. Was he an artist? He always liked all kinds of morbid stuff, whether it was music, movies, paintings. So do I, really. We had that in common, amongst other things. People say it's depressing to listen to sad songs or watch sad films, but I never felt that way. And yet, you are scared of fog. <laughs> well, that's different. I might be scared of fog, but I like spiders. They're beautiful. You must be out of your mind, Mitzi. No, hey, spiders are awesome. There's a certain indescribable beauty in sadness. Just like there's beauty in the gray and ugly winter morning when you look past the obvious and notice what others can't see. You must Sorry, love my apartment then. It's like ugly took a vacation here and never went home again. Best apartment ever. How did he die? How did Jack die? Why light a cigarette? The last few weeks before, before he died. What I didn't know was that he kept looking for something. I don't think he even knew what exactly. But it eventually found him. Or rather, he found him. There are those forums online, you know? About all sorts of stuff. Fishing, computer games, horses, gambling, addictions. Everything, really. Accidentally, Jack stumbled upon one about suicide. Accidentally? The guy there calls himself the Eye of Adam. He's a fucking god on that forum. It's like a failed suicide club. People mostly try to help each other and offer support. Sometimes it just helps to know there are others like you. To listen to their stories and, and how they cope with their lives. But the Eye of Adam is an advocate of death. Well, I have Adam needs to piss off. His job is to plant an idea, to give them a reason to die and tell them how to do it, once and for good. Jack took the bait. Before he knew, he was completely brainwashed. One day, he sat down with me and tried to explain his perfect solution. It was the Romeo and Juliet kind of scenario. We were both to die together in each other's arms. It was supposed to be a quick and foolproof death. There was no chance we would have been saved. All thanks to the eye of Adam, who created a tool for perfect suicide. He told me it was very simple. All we needed were two easily accessible household chemicals, which combined together create gas called hydrogen sulfide that kills you within a couple of minutes. I told him he was fucking nuts, of course. Yeah, yeah, he is. But he just wouldn't give up. He reasoned with me, then he begged, and eventually just kept screaming at me. I figured it was his crazy idea of a modern romance, but it was downright tacky and just wrong. I'm not sure if tacky was the word I would have used. He said he would get everything ready and wait for me in our special place at dawn. Five in the morning. Don't be late. Those were his last words he said to me. Then he stormed out. I cried for 
hours thinking I, I didn't deserve all that from the person I love most in the whole world. A few times I even tried to persuade myself that maybe he was right and I should do it. No. But I just couldn't. I eventually fell asleep. I didn't plan it. My head was killing me. I was so tired. I woke up suddenly. I could see the sun rising out my window. It was nearly five. In utter panic, I threw myself off the bed and ran out the door. I needed to stop him. I needed to get there before it was too late. But right there in my bedroom, before I even left, I already knew it was. When I arrived at our special place, it was already bright. We used to go there in the past, drink wine, Sometimes smoke weed and listen to Pink Floyd. Sometimes make love in Jack's car. There wasn't really anything special about that old park lot. But to us there was. I think I'd have sex it in the car. It was completely abandoned. It was quiet. It was safe. After that day, I've never gone there again. Oh no, I don't want to play as her discovering this. This is terrible. No. And they did the music thing. And now my phone's ringing. And it's been like 26 minutes. Alright, I'm gonna cut this off here and take care of the phone issue. And then I'll be back for more. Bye!